GitHub is uh, maybe the best office that I ever seen. I like saw that. a lot. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's pretty empty. So company currently have over uh, 1,000 employees and 60% of them work from home, women in tech. Is it a real problem? Yes, it is a big problem. Dzień dobry, Kasia. Dzień dobry. Всім привіт, добро пожаловать на канал Frog Blog. І сьогодні нас чекає дуже цікаве інтерв'ю. Зі мною рядом Senior Product Manager в GitHub. Kasia, is it office or is it bar? <laughs> yeah, actually we are the GitHub headquarters. Yes, we do have a bar. Uh, it's really fun and actually it represents the culture that uh, we are very um, outgoing, uh, very startup oriented company, still startup mentality, uh, growing and yeah, it's very, we talk about it later, I guess, in the interview. Yeah, but sure. What are you doing here? As I said, a, you're senior product manager. Yeah, so I work as a senior product manager. I manage uh, billings and payments and subscription flows for uh, GitHub offerings. You have so interesting background. I know that you was a part of Olympic team of runners, right? Yeah, uh, yeah Olympic teams is a little bit too much, but definitely I have some uh, history with sport. I was on the national team in Poland. I was uh, a sprinter and I was definitely preparing for um, Olympic Games at some point. However, it didn't work out um, as many athletes decide to pursue different careers or they have different um, goals in their lives, but yes, sport was definitely something that I was passionate about. Your first education is in something that I can't pronounce, like yeah. kinesthesiology or something like that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's pronounced kinesiology. Oh, okay. So pretty much this is education of uh, physical science, which is uh, like body movement, biomechanics, and pretty much like a physical education uh, a speciality. Mm -hmm. And when mm, did you decide to change your like major? Yes, yeah, so um, I graduated in Poland uh, with a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and right after that I moved to uh, California. And once I moved to California I wanted to continue pursuing uh, the same educational background. However, I got job opportunity to work at a startup which is called coupons.com and now it's quotient uh, technologies. And after I got some experience, uh, like my career started to growing, I decided to change that my major and go for like, computer science and product management. When uh, did you realize that you need uh, some knowledge in uh, computer science? Yeah, this is a great question. So definitely um, after I became more serious about uh, working in tech industry, I learned that I need to get a little bit more like a scientific and, and educational background in computer science. So while I was working at the startup, I was working part-time as a like a processing agent, like a data. I started, my, my first career was data entry, just mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, experience what is tech. And then I learned that, okay, I need a little bit more uh, background into computer science and learn a little bit uh, from the uh, th theory perspective. So uh, now you are a senior product manager. It's a great career. You was in Symantec, now you're in GitHub. And who is product manager? Yeah, so um, product manager is a, a person in the engineering organization who manages the product requirements, who works with the engineering team uh, with, to understand what uh, we are trying to achieve, what is the problem, and provide uh, directions or business guidelines to the engineering team. And um, most of the biggest organizations, they have product management uh, teams and product management support to pretty much uh, provide that uh, uh, middleman between the business and business objectives and talk to the engineering team and vice versa, right? What engineering feedback is, should be provided to the business as well. What is the main like qualities for product manager? Uh, who is like a good product manager? A good product manager definitely must have good communication skills, uh, must be uh, business uh, oriented, and um, 
it's very helpful if you're technically savvy and if you understand the engineering language. It doesn't mean that you have to have um, engineering background, but pretty much understanding how they work, what type of languages the uh, programming languages are there, and how to communicate their feedback to business. So um, a good product manager is pretty much like a CEO of a company, right? You own the product, you manage the product, and you're representing the product. And I think if you have qualities uh, like that, definitely you can try learning about product management. There is a lot of uh, online classes, online courses available on uh, the internet and a lot of blogs about product management. So if anyone is interested, what, what is this? I would definitely start from the resources available online. As I see, uh, the like path of uh, product manager is pretty difficult for people who came from different countries. I mean, um, as you know, my like audience is uh, Russian-speaking people. They're from Eastern Europe and they have uh, different like culture and everything. And you actually from Poland, yes. which is not far from uh, my uh, home country and from uh, Russia, Ukraine and everything. So. Um, um, I think we pretty close our, our culture. And was it difficult for you uh, to become a product manager here to communicate with people? I definitely challenge a little bit in the beginning um, with this role, especially as you know, the tech industry is mainly occupied by men. Mm -hmm. There is less women and working with men in the position as product manager can be challenging. Definitely, uh, I had to gain more confidence more improve my communication skill and also not to take things personally when I have uh, conflicts or challenges uh, with my stakeholders or engineers. Thankfully, I had a great mentor uh, who brought me in and introduced me to uh, product management. So she was also a woman and I really, really uh, appreciate the help and assistance I got from my mentor and my uh, managers. Uh, they pre pretty much prepared me for this role and we had a lot of conversations of how to communicate to the team, how to uh, voice our opinion and establish our position. And I think uh, this was like a key uh, moment in my career where I decided, hey, yes, this is the role for me. I can work on my uh, weaknesses uh, and improve my strength and become a very good product manager. What was your weaknesses? Definitely, as any beginner who is going to more technical uh, field, first of all, the lack of technical knowledge. I think that was the like the biggest weakness and the biggest thing that uh, stopped me from improving. That was the reason I decided to go back to school and get that knowledge, so I'm more confident and also more uh, I understand that technical language. And the other thing, being as a, as a woman, right, working with in with men. It's not the easiest thing and yeah. uh, establishing that position that we are players, team players, and we are uh, working as a team, not as who is better or who has more knowledge, right? I think uh, bringing that diversity to the team helps also the team to make better decisions and collaborate together more effectively. Diversity is a hot topic here right now. Yes. Uh, what do you think about it? Why uh, companies need uh, to have people from all over the world? Why they need uh, like women uh, in tech more than they have now? You're right, this is a very hot topic and I think a lot of companies focus their uh, energy and uh, resources on making sure that the culture is more diverse. From my experience, I know that, uh, again, working as a woman, working in tech industry is very challenging and can be difficult. And this is definitely not for everyone. However, if you overcome that, you will learn that it's easier than it looks like. I think diversity brings not only uh, different type of energies, but also perspective and also like how we communicate, right? Uh, many times when you go to a meeting, especially leadership meetings, you will see there are mainly men and they communicate in a different way. But if you bring women to the table, the conversation becomes more, uh, it's different. And I think it's very important to make sure that the group is balanced, right? To have uh, people from different countries, different backgrounds, different uh, genders, right? To make sure that you voice your opinion 
and everybody is heard because every opinion is important. Of course, if you make this global product, you need people from all over the world. You need Absolutely. different people, right? Yes. Yeah. As I know, you are active in uh, many uh, organizations like uh, Women in Tech. Yes. Why do you do this? Tech Women is the organization uh, sponsored by the U.S. government where women from um, regions such as Africa, Middle East and Asia are invited to the States, to the Silicon Valley, and they work with uh, leaders here, technical leaders in California. And I learned about this organization through Symantec. Symantec is one of the sponsors of Tech Women. What they do, they pretty much pro they have programs, leadership programs for women in tech in these regions and uh, make sure that they network, they provide support and mentorship uh, for women in these countries, especially these countries, they're much more challenging for women and growing their business and being a leader as a woman is very, very uh, difficult. So this organization helps out uh, to pretty much empower women. And I, what I learn about um, the most about this culture is like we are all the same. And definitely we all want to achieve the same goals. We all want to prove ourselves that we can do it. And you learn that uh, it's really uh, interesting to see that we all have the same problems and the same challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think mentorship is very, very important in anyone's career, either it's a man or a woman, but it plays a huge role into your growth and development. Can you provide uh, us with uh, some example of successful stories? I mean, women successful stories. Um, definitely there is more, right? We heard that uh, women communities are growing. There is, uh, I would definitely recommend a lot of like Facebook uh, groups about women entrepreneurs, uh, women in business, uh, women in your local like regions. And uh, I also myself belong to uh, Polish professional women in Silicon Valley which is like very fast growing group where we share uh, our experiences, our network, and uh, we have some development programs sponsored by the team. And, you know, any success that we have and see in our peers and in the community should be motivating and encouraging us to do better and go even further. Yeah. So I think um, I cannot give you a specific example, but definitely yeah. overall, I think we should motivate each other and help each other and especially network. I think networking is one of the most strategic things that you need in order to become very successful in what you're doing, because it might sound that it's easy to do everything on your own, but it's easier when you have a group who can mentor and support you in making yeah. decisions. Sounds motivating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you think about discrimination, women and tech? Is it a real problem? Yes, it is a big problem. Discrimination definitely is a hot topic right now and a lot of companies want to improve that or change the trend, right? They want to give more opportunities to women and more opportunities to different bag people with different backgrounds to grow, right? And uh, especially in tech industry where it's like mainly uh, driven by men. So there is definitely a huge need for reducing the discrimination and improving that. Have you ever had this problem? Like, Yes, especially in the beginning of my career, I had some instances where I felt discriminated and I felt like um, the opportunity wasn't given to me because of, first of all, my accent and my English and uh, lack of uh, skills, right? But eventually I started voicing my opinion and started expressing that I need more. I need more challenges and fortunately enough uh, I was given the opportunity to get what I wanted but it required me to speak up right people who don't speak up they usually miss all opportunity right but um, do you have any recommendations for women in tech how to make their voice louder uh, I would recommend uh, not to be shy to express your opinion go to your uh, manager and leaders and pretty much uh, express your opinion, express your interest in something. If you want to learn something, you want to grow, you have to go and get it. You have to tell your boss, tell your manager and tell your leaders that I'm interested in getting more experience 
improving my skills and learning something new. And I think that's the first step you can take. The second of all is to pretty much um, have a mentor. I think having a mentor in person who you can talk to will help you out to uh, overcome and maybe share your experiences, share your doubts, share your strategy with somebody who is more experienced. And last but not least, uh, it's worth to uh, go and uh, study. If you don't have knowledge into, in a certain area, go and find an online class, find a local school, local college that offer programs like that and just try to learn something new and don't stop in don't stop uh learning don't stop asking questions if there is something that interests you just go for it right you will not lose you will just gain and i think uh especially for women that are just entering tech industry i would say the biggest advice just to be confident don't think that you know less don't think that you're not good enough just go and go for it and you will definitely grow with any experience as long as you can overcome your shyness overcome your doubts you you're on a better place than before as i know you work for semantic it's a big company 40 years uh, on the market uh, but now you are in github which is kind of a startup why did you do this why did you change the job um, so uh, in Silicon Valley, I think it's a trend to be open for new opportunities and learn and grow with uh, your set of skills. And um, I think on average, people work in one company maximum like five, seven years. And uh, I was at the point where I was at Symantec for three years and I learned a lot about product management and industry and how to work with uh, engineers. So I decided to give myself a shot and try to interview with different companies and github reach out to me on linkedin and i really like the conversation i really liked how we were uh communicating with each other what the company was about and where company was uh, heading to and um it all worked out great i'm here today and uh i really really enjoy um yeah. github what is product manager interview looks like product manager interview at github um, definitely is a um, complex one there are a few phases first uh, you talk to a recruiter to learn if this role is for you and if you're interested in pursuing the next step then you have a, um, a conversation with the hiring manager who evaluates your uh, set of skill and if he consider you as a potential candidate, you're pushed to another round. Um, another round is uh, pretty much conversation with the engineering needs and other product managers who uh, assess your uh, uh, technical background and product management background. And once uh, this uh, step is uh, concluded, you are given a final um, round where you have to present a presentation on a specific topic that presentation is pretty much evaluated by the engineers and product team how many uh, interviews how many companies did you have before github and uh, why did you choose uh, this company yes this is a very interesting question i talked to many companies before i decided to uh, go with the pursue conversation with github i talk uh, with uh, some startups as well as with big companies like Google, Apple, mm -hmm. Facebook, and uh, Amazon. And why did you choose uh, this company, GitHub? GitHub was pretty much uh, different than every other company I talked to because of the remote uh, job offerings, um, yeah. which was really like something that I was definitely look uh, for when applying for jobs. So you wanted to, to work remotely, right? Correct. Why? I wanted to try it uh, for a long time. I definitely enjoy working from home. I think working from home gives you much more benefits in terms of, first of all, you save time on commuting. As you may know, uh, Bay Area is very crowded and the commute can be challenging. So I definitely wanted to reduce on that stress of commuting and being in the 
car for like two and a half hours. Uh, second of all, I feel like you can be more productive working from home, even though people have misconception, oh, working from home can be challenging because of everybody else is working from home, they might not be available. Actually, it's opposite. I think people are more relaxed, more um, open to uh, communicate with you and um, they know the importance of being available. Uh, what is really different from other companies that you have to be on camera most of the time when you're on the meeting. So uh, this can be a little bit uh, uh, overwhelming for shy people, but you get used to it. Uh, and you have here, I mean, GitHub is uh, maybe the best office that i ever seen. Thank I saw you. a lot. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's pretty empty. Yes. So how many people work from home? So company currently have over uh, 1,000 employees and 60% of them work from home. Mm -hmm. So 40% of the employees are based in Silicon Valley, San Francisco area. But again, it doesn't re require them to be in the office every day. Yeah, that, but it's very, very nice. And uh, what about your team? How many people are um, usually in office and how many? Uh, my team um, is mainly remote. Um, they work from um, different sides of the country. Some of them are on the East Coast, some of them are on the West Coast and uh, Midwest. Um, my manager is located in San Francisco and my engineering uh, partners mm -hmm. are also located in uh, Northern California. What's um, your uh, usual remote day look like? Listen. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I think, uh, first of all, uh, I start my day around 9 a.m., sometimes 8.30, where we usually uh, have a meeting with the team. Uh, mainly we communicate via Slack, so we don't have daily stand-ups. We pretty much use Slack to communicate what we are working on and uh, talk to the team if there are any blockers or issues. Um, Usually meetings are until like 3 p.m. to respect the East Coast team time, right? Because there is a time difference of three hours, mm. sometimes two. So we try not to schedule meetings after 3 p.m. Yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting to see, you know, how people enjoy working from home. And the, the culture itself is really good. And I don't see any differences between working from home and working in the office. Mm. But you can, like, you have your coach and you work from coach and <laughs> that's it? Like it Yeah, you can do that, uh, definitely. <laughs> the, the culture is very relaxed. I see people uh, working from their patio, balcony, ba uh, backyard, from couch, from the office, from desk, right? So it really depends. Even here at the GitHub office, you can uh, have a meeting in the, the, the lounge or the bar or yeah. in the patio, right? So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter. As long as you, you can deliver the work and you can focus and you can meet the goals, I think uh, yeah. people should not really pay much attention on where you are physically. Uh, last October, um, GitHub um, got acquired uh, by Microsoft. Um, can you describe some changes that was happening? So with as with when any acquisition by a big enterprise company, um, organization like GitHub going through transformation. And um, I think um, what is GitHub uh, going through now is pretty much a growth state where from being a startup who was doing fairly well in the open source community, um, they are now having more challenging goals into becoming more global company and uh, definitely sales is more uh, focused on selling paid products and providing more offerings. So I think uh, the culture definitely will change and become more like a mature or growing organization, whereas the startup. And I think that's the biggest difference for companies who are getting acquired by enterprises. Sorry for uh, such an uh, intimate question, but I just want to know, um, did um, salaries of employees uh, um, increase um, after acquisition? I think GitHub has pretty competitive uh, compensation, uh, especially after 
becoming part of Microsoft, they definitely went through some adjustments into how they compensate. Uh, and uh, I think the, the salaries are fairly good for the local market and uh, they're very competitive. So uh, big companies uh, like Microsoft and uh, Google and Amazon usually um, give uh, their employees stocks. Is it the same? Like yes, it that? is the same. Um, as a package, you receive stocks, you receive medical benefits and a, com a competitive salary. Yeah, and you also have massage and everything. Yes, we also have a lot of perks uh, in-house. We have a free massage, we have a free bar, yeah. we have uh, a lot of events, we have summits, mini summits. So there is a lot of perks for the existing employees to uh, enjoy uh, offerings and give them. Yeah, you worked for Symantec and now you're in GitHub. Uh, what is the difference between uh, these companies and what was the main challenges to work for, um, of uh, working in big company and in a startup like GitHub? Definitely there are a lot of uh, differences between a mature company like Symantec and growing company like GitHub. I think the culture wise here is the, um, GitHub offers a lot of like a flexibility, remote work, um, and uh, pretty much they are very innovative. They are trying to come up with uh, solutions and be competitive. Whereas a cement, like you mentioned before, it's a mature company with a great product and uh, they have a, already like a base of customers and they're available globally. So there are differences, right? Where you are in a uh, with your company, what is the state of the company, and uh, what type of offerings they have. Uh, Semantic is a cybersecurity company. They provide antivirus and solutions for enterprises and consumers, and they have established uh, user base. Whereas GitHub, they are in a growing state, and they need to acquire more customers, they need to acquire more users, and they're pretty much trying to evolve their pro products and offerings to have a better reach. I want to uh, like, ask you about remote job again, but not about exactly remote job, but about future of mm -hmm. uh, remote job. As we know, there are many companies, there are many uh, uh, software engineer, product managers, but that's not enough for these companies. And what do you think? Is it future for these companies, I mean, remote job? Mm. Especially in the open source, uh projects, right? Being remote is a key you can contribute to from anywhere. And I think a lot of companies started learning that there are a lot of benefits working remotely. And uh, it actually might help the company to have 24 hours uh, of support from different teams. And um, actually, people who work remotely, there are many studies that show that you're more productive when you work remotely, you're more happier, you're less stressed, and you're more creative because you have that very good life and work balance. Yeah. And I can speak from my own experience that definitely I became uh, less, uh, less stressed, more relaxed, and I don't really feel like I'm working 24 hours. I feel like even though I'm available most of the time, I don't feel that pressure of uh, being stressed as much as I used to go to the office every day. Now you're a senior product manager, but as I saw in your LinkedIn, you have always this like studying in Stanford and also in Harvard. Why do you need that? Yeah, so I think um, the reason why I, um, first of all, decided to go back to school was through uh, my partner. He is big on knowledge and he's himself at school. We look at some uh, schools such as Harvard and Stanford and I found good programs that do not require too much technical background, but they will give you enough of um, knowledge or enough preparation to become like more successful in the tech industry, right? Actually in any industry. But into 2017, 
you had some studies, some like classes uh, in blockchain and everything. Yes. Was it just uh, like hype on hype or it was your real interest? So definitely I started learning about blockchain and we've been hearing about blockchain for uh, last few years. It's been like, um, first of all, it started with Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency and now it's become a real deal. It is actually changing um, how we are looking at the uh, certain digital asset management, right? And, and other things. So as we need to learn about, um, b about different technologies and evolve, I think blockchain is one of the topics that it's worth to look at and learning about, especially it will become like a big aspect of any programming uh, in the future. Let's uh, talk about future of this technology. Do you think uh, humanity needs it? Absolutely. I think it will be a necessary uh, solution for uh, many industries, starting from banking, finance, IoT or supply chain, even legal like administrations, uh, pretty much all digital asset management. I think uh, it has a lot of potential and a lot of um, reasons why we should choose blockchain. There are also like pros and cons. Not everyone needs a blockchain, but eventually we need a little bit more advanced technology to keep our data more secure, more uh, transparent, and also uh, we need to protect digital assets the way it should be, right? And especially there's more and more vulnerabilities uh, on, the, on the, like privacy, and blockchain is probably one of the technologies that will help us to make it more secured and make it more uh, distributed to users. But now it's not uh, like in the field of your interest. Not yet. I'm a little. Um, still studying about it. I still want to become more knowledgeable on blockchain and uh, crypto cryptography and make sure that I fully understand it. Uh, definitely, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, in uh, for especially for startups to go into the blockchain because there is a demand. We are in the growing state. Uh, this technology is in the growing state. So pretty much uh, anyone who there is a demand for uh, engineers into in blockchain with the blockchain background. Can you describe more deeply uh, programs that you take in Harvard? Like yeah, so uh, this year I uh, finished credentials of readiness which includes business economics, finance, and statistics. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is a very comprehensive program uh, created by uh, Harvard uh, staff and professors, where they pretty much get preparing you for being a business owner, what to look at when making strategic decisions, and also how to look at data that you're receiving from your uh, business partners and pretty much um, this entire program gets you ready to be a business owner and mm -hmm. uh, set up your business on the right uh, note. Does it mean that you want to be a like, business owner to start your own business or it just knowledge? Um, I think uh, yes and no. I think that knowledge is very important for, um, for everyone who deals with the business and me, especially as a product manager, I work with different teams, with different people and different needs of the business, right? And for me to understand the high level and the strategy, business strategy helps me out to make better decisions as a product. Mm -hmm. It's not only focusing on the specific problem or a project, but also how to map out this project into a business vision and business strategy. So I think definitely that knowledge is for anyone. It's not only for people who wants to go into the business and become like a business owner, but also anyone who wants to make better decisions. I would like uh, to talk about blockchain because it's really interesting field and uh, you have some expertise, right? How do you think, what the biggest challenges in this industry now? So definitely, uh, this is a good question. Blockchain is in a growing phase right now and there are many challenges to overcome. It's an expensive solution. Uh, a lot of companies don't know exactly how to use it and for what solutions to use it. So not necessarily it's for everything. It's only for like, a, as of now, limited scope. Also, there is no a lot of skilled people. So 
even though companies want to implement uh, blockchain technology into their offerings, there is no much uh, engineers who actually are skilled to develop these type of technology. So I know Amazon, let's say they have special classes for on blockchain <laughs> um, to train their uh, staff. The other um, issue is definitely uh, privacy, right? And regulation, it's not as regulated. So a lot of like uh, companies will struggle and are struggling with regulation and uh, security and privacy, right? So these are, there's many, many factors. What are the challenges of the blockchain? But I think for engineers or whoever wants to go into blockchain technology, if you find the challenge and if you focus on the challenge, how to solve it, definitely this is an opportunity for a startup. And especially um, at Stanford University, we have a professor who is listing out all of these uh, challenges and he's pretty much telling us if you know, if you can find a solution for that, this is opportunity for a startup. So I definitely recommend anyone who is interested into blockchain, definitely dive into that and learn about challenges and how to optimize these uh, areas. Could you recommend some sources for uh, people who want to be uh, into this technology? Yes, uh, there are a lot of podcasts on blockchain uh, and a lot of YouTube uh, information. There is uh, one-on-one blockchain and a bunch of uh, blogs and a bunch of like resources online. So uh, there's a bunch of books as well uh, about blockchain. So if you want to learn about blockchain and what it is and how to start, definitely recommend to go into resources that are available online. And there are programs at the universities that are offering blockchain. So I would definitely start with the local like, schools, local programs and uh, learning more online. But you took uh, the program in uh, Stanford, Stanford University. Yeah, so this is just an introduction on, about cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, and uh, pretty much how to get and start understanding because there is a big confusion what is blockchain, right? People don't know, don't fully understand what is blockchain. And that's why organizations and enterprises have a problem with implementing their blockchain because if the leadership doesn't understand it, mm -hmm. uh, they will not pretty much pursue that. But if the leadership understands the importance of the blockchain, they will definitely put resources and money into developing the technology. Could you please provide us with uh, like main thoughts about blockchain that you took from this uh, Stanford course? What is it? What it for? I guess the most important thing I took out from uh, this program was uh, the importance of developing and learning new languages and being on top of what's going on in uh, the technology world and what are the trends. And definitely blockchain is one of the hot topics and it's worth going there. There's a huge market uh, for jobs available uh, in Silicon Valley and especially like a central part of Europe. And uh, if we want to go into the blockchain, this is the right time to do it because we are in the growth, right? The, the technology is growing. There is a lot of optimizations to be done and a lot of opportunities for startups. So anyone who is seeking or trying to learn something new, definitely blockchain is a topic to consider. But I don't want this to be like about blockchain, you know, because I'm not an expert. Yeah, just to say, I, you, I, just I, say hey, you know what? I took it and this is my experience. And yeah. I recommend anyone who is looking for like a language to go for. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity. A lot of jobs mm -hmm. in that area and a lot of opportunities. We should say about Libra, you know, mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. But I don't want to go there because I'm not an expert. Yeah, I, I understand you. Exactly. What's your goals for the future? Uh, my... Goal, one of my goals definitely is to continue studying. Um, I already registered for another Harvard uh, program that is starting in October. Um, uh, I want to improve my management and leadership skills and as well learn about uh, blockchain, continue learning about blockchain, cryptocurrency, as I think this is a very hot topic and there is uh, not enough experts in that industry. So I would love to uh, try my uh, strength there and at some point maybe challenge myself in uh, looking for opportunities in that area. Do you have some uh, recommendation for people who want to be a product manager? Uh, maybe for women in product um, management, maybe uh, for everybody? First of all, I would definitely uh, try to learn what is product management were the opportunities and how you can get into that field. 
Second of all, I would uh, reach out to your uh, uh, team, leadership team, and voice your opinion. Hey, I would love to try and or move to the product management and what I should do to get there. So definitely use resources that you have available as of now. And once you have some guidelines or support from the leaders, I would uh, definitely take advantage and go for it. Once you are in the field, don't be hesitate to ask questions, ask for help, express, I don't know. I don't actually, telling the team that I don't know, it's much more better than pretending you know, because they can always teach and guide you to make a good decision instead of uh, making mistakes. And last but not least, I would say go and get a mentor as uh, they will be support uh, for making any decisions and they definitely can promote you to get where you want to be. Thank you for sharing your story, for <laughs> having uh, us here in GitHub office, because it's really nice. And thank you for being here in my channel and uh, sharing like your expertise. Thank, thank you. you so much. I uh, send regards to everyone who is watching and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Спасибо, что досмотрели. Вы знаете, что нужно подписаться на этот канал. Если вам понравилось это видео, поставьте лайки. И я жду особенно девушек в комментариях. Расскажите свою историю, сталкивались ли вы с какими-то трудностями в своей карьере технологии. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.